Mukwana. Uh, we'll be learning how to pronounce his name better in a few moments. Uh, we also have uh, political analyst uh, Benji Ndolo as well as uh, lawyer Tommy Randall. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us in studio. I think I'll settle for Mukwana instead of Alutalala. It's a bit too difficult for me. Uh, but let's take a look at us making headlines on the dailies this morning. And uh, on the front page of the Sunday Standard, up to one billion shillings in epic battle of top lawyers. And on the front page of the Sunday Nation, their inside story of NASA's election court battle. But let's begin with us making headlines on the Standard newspaper. So on the front page there, uh, an epic battle of uh, top legal minds there as about one billion shillings is up for grabs for the top legal minds that will be representing uh, the parties in this presidential petition. And that report continues on uh, page uh, from pages 4 uh, to page uh, 9 of the paper. Let's uh, begin on page 6, because on page 6 is the headline, NASA's case is a waste of time. And this is from Jubilee, uh, the Jubilee legal team, saying they have gone through the petition given by NASA, and they are confident that they will be flooring the opposition again. Let's begin with you, Benji. Uh, on... Uh, that your thoughts, first of all, on the contents that have been going around on the petition that was given by NASA. Um, Michelle, thanks for having me. Good morning. Good, lovely Sunday morning. I'm a big, big, big proponent of the philosophy that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over. And we had this discussion here at KTN, out there in uh, blogosphere, in different fora, about the choice of flag bearer and why. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, uh -huh. expecting a different result. This Supreme Court um, ruling, when it happened, I was actually here at the KTN studio up here at the Atrium. And as you well know, the ruling was about maybe three minutes long, uh -huh. in which the former Chief Justice, a former an ex-detainee himself, a hero by any standards, promised to deliver the full judgment within months, after which there was a lot of delay because there was allegedly a discrepancy between the actual results and additional two million ballots that Honorable Raila Odinga asserted came in from the UK on KQ, this, 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 got marked, etc. So this is the same court then that forced this former heroic chief justice to run away, uh -huh. and that got now a new one. And you're telling me that you're going there in search of justice. So are I you think agreeing then that NASA's case is a waste of time? I think the strategy is wrong from the beginning. Uh -huh. The strategy is wrong through and through. They're not able to think outside the box. They're not able to use the weapons that they have. Uh -huh. They're always outfoxed by Jubilee. And so I think it's a disservice, Michelle, for us to sit on national television and kind of lie to Kenyans that we're, we're perusing the details of the petition <laughs> and in here is some sort of magic that will have Uhuru chased away. Are you mm -hmm. kidding me? Mm -hmm. How? All right, and we'll be taking a look at the How? details of that petition. But Mukwana, your thoughts uh, on uh, the Jubilee's uh, uh, side's remarks there saying NASA is a waste of time. Do you agree with Benji Ndolo? Uh, thanks, uh, Michelle, for hosting us this morning. Uh, yes and no. It is my view that when NASA went into these campaigns, the best approach should have been to adopt a preventive approach that would have seen them not lose the election and therefore not reach where we are now, as opposed to trying to you know, close this table after the horse has already bolted. So to that extent, I would agree with Benji that what NASA ought to have done. And if you remember, uh, mm -hmm. Michelle, Honorable Raila Odinga told us very clearly that this time we are not going to come back to our people yep. to say, it may be one. It be one. Mm -hmm. And to many NASA supporters, they believed him that what he has in stock this time is preventive. <laughs> Sasa washameza utamtoa mdomoni sibala. So in my view, to that extent, yes, it ought to have been a preventive 
step. Mm -hmm. However, I do not agree with my brother Benji yes. when he says that going to court is a waste of time. As an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, that will be, that, that will be wrong mm -hmm. to say that going to court is a waste of time. Right. In any case, what did you believe, uh, what Jubilee is saying, you must take it with a pinch of salt, Michelle. These are the same politicians who like beating the drums of war, mm -hmm. and they're at it again. When Raila said, we are not having the option of going to court, condemnations came. Right. That you must go to court. That is the constitutional way of solving disputes. Mm Honda -hmm. Raila has said very well, even against some, the wishes of some of his supporters. If you remember that clip in Kisumu, mm -hmm. that mama uh, on, uh, selling boga saying, yeah. why are you going back to court? We were there in 2013. Yeah. It didn't help us. Right. Why are you going back there? Right. So when Honda Raila says we'll go to the court of public, public opinion, that's exactly what they had in mind. We are not going to court because 2013, we were done in. Mm -hmm. This time, we are going to the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. So we expected that they not go to court, go to the streets, demonstrate, which is a constitutional guarantee, by the way. Mm -hmm. Nobody should tell Kenyans that they are not allowed to demonstrate. What they are not allowed to do is to still destroy pillage property as they do that. Mm -hmm. So I do not agree with those who are holding that, look, going to court is a waste of time. I have had the privilege to peruse the petition. Right. I have not had the privilege to peruse the defense. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you that NASA have a very good case. Right. Anyone who is saying the waste of time knows what we lawyers don't know. Uh, we, we, we don't expect uh, you know, the arrivals to say the case is too difficult for them to prosecute, but we'll be taking a look at the details Thank of you. that in just a moment. But uh, Tommy, when Benji began, uh, he said you cannot do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Going all the way back to the choice of flag bearer for the opposition, do you think that is where they began getting it wrong? Yes. I think the nation is suffering from what I call Raila fatigue. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and in addition to that, there are so many mistakes made during the campaign. The, their marketing of their party, I, I can't even call it a party, it's a confederation of sorts. Okay. Uh, to where I go to the ballot and there is no NASA there. <laughs> then I have people who are in my same coalition competing against me at every level of government. Yep. You see, that's where, that, that was first bad strategy in the first place. And you know, they, they seem to be consistent, consistently making bad choices, bad strategies, bad hopefully they can resolve, they can salvage themselves in court. And that's still going to be a tall order because of the precedent that was set in 2013. Now, uh, the funny thing is they have the team of lawyers, they have a, an, a former AG on their side, senior counsels and all that, and they keep making legal mistakes and strategic mistakes that nobody should be, that people of their caliber should not be making. Right, all right. Yes. Um, let's go back to Mkwana's uh, concerns of having, you know, initially should have, that, that NASA should have had preventative measures uh, as opposed to finding itself where it is now. But uh, yes, Raila Odinga did tell his supporters this time they will not rig this election. This time we've put in place enough measures to ensure that if they rig the election, the, um, they will be found. And that resulted in that uh, landmark uh, court ruling that uh, results uh, will be, presidential results will be final at the constituency level. But let's go back to page four of the standard newspaper and take a look at some of the complaints that NASA has in their petition. And uh, one of them is that uh, the entire process from the polling stations to the constituency and national telling center was not simple, not accurate and not verifiable, secure, accountable, transparent, or open and prompt. Uh, so it was a big celebration uh, for both NASA and the country as a whole, uh, because this was a win for the country in that landmark ruling. Uh, but Benji, what do you make of this now? Uh, because many are arguing, you cannot just say a law is good because when it favors you and when it's not in your favor, you start going against that particular law. Um, I think there are very serious uh, issues to be canvassed in court, mm -hmm. and which is why the importance and credibility of institutions, Michelle, is very important. But I think we are still making a mistake even in our analysis here. Mm -hmm. While the court can offer a legal solution to this problem, there's a bigger angle to this issue, which is a political settlement for the sake, especially, and this concerns me a lot, Michelle, for the sake of the unity of the country. Because we don't want some community saying that clearly, and not everyone is as educated and I suppose as you, mm -hmm. that Kabila Langu had to right. Clearly it's been seen, Raila's father was unable, Raila is unable, etc. So for me, because you're seeing even intel intelligentsia, academia talking about divorce, mm -hmm. talking about, you know, we need to carve out 
a, a different part of the republic for certain communities and for others. That's a talk that worries me. I'm a young Kenyan that wants to see this country move forward. And therefore, the pursuit of justice, Michelle, is not just in these little details and how one can outmaneuver the other. We must look at also the greater context uh -huh. and the greater well-being of the country. Now, one of the points I wanted to make very quickly, um, because I'll let the lawyers respond in detail to these allegations, Michelle. One of the problems that we had is, in actual fact, Raila and Uhuru should have begun this way on the actual day of uh -huh. returns. Uh -huh. At zero. At zero. And then once Kiambu comes in, Uhuru goes up. Once Nairobi comes in, maybe a Nyanza, Raila catches up. And then another stronghold comes in, like Mombasa, and Raila overtakes Uhuru. Rift Valley comes in, and Uhuru overtakes Raila. Uh -huh. Without addressing these kinds of issues, because you know, perception is reality, Michelle, you then have a general feeling that Raila is cooked from the beginning all the time. And this is what I saw on some footage yesterday, a lady sitting on the ground saying, how come these people always fix Raila? Right. And so, no matter the outcome of the case, again, and especially if it goes the way that we think, that it's very difficult to annul the win uh -huh. of, of a president, of an incumbent, all right? We must look at the greater problem of people basically giving up. The youth, five new million youth voted for the first time. Mm -hmm. And we must not have in a democracy, Michelle, people feel that, you know, no matter what you do, this thing is already rigged from the beginning right. and the decision is already made. Mm -hmm. um, this is not so much about Raila Odinga as a person. It's also about the country and the future of the country and the future of democracy. Mm -hmm. And so I'd rather look at it in that larger context and then leave the details to their lawyers. Yeah. But again, I'll reiterate that it's unfortunate that we had the perception that from when the results started coming in, mm -hmm. all right, and we're not trying it here on studio, Uhuru began ahead and remained ahead. This right. is what happened in 2013. Mm -hmm. This is what has led to, and why it's an important point, Michelle, is that no matter what happens in court, that perception still remains. Remains and uh, makes the people feel whether Raila has lost or not, mm -hmm. that he has but been rigged, and that's a problem. How then, Wakwana, would we begin finding an all-round solution, not just a court solution to the statement between Uhuru and Kenyatta, I mean Uhuru and Raila, but uh, uh, a political solution uh, to this issue as well? Because as it is, the issue of trust uh, is one that uh, has divided Kenyans uh, along many lines. Uh, the, the issue of trust is what has brought us here, uh, got us here where we are in the first place. Do you think, Mukwana, that we will be able to find an all-round solution mm -hmm. in not just a court solution. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Uh, first of all, before I respond to that, allow me just to mention something about what my uh, colleague here says, uh, that uh, there is a Raila fatigue in the country. Uh -huh. uh, I would take exception to that with due respect, because if even with the alleged cooking of results, uh -huh. Raila has six million plus. Imagine. That doesn't indicate fatigue. Right. So I will take exception with greatest of respect to my colleague to that kind of statement. Two, he, when he talks about 2013, the legal team of Raila and co. having made legal mistakes, mm -hmm. from where I sit, I, I, I do not know what mistakes are. Uh, with, with the greatest respect to the decision of 2013 the Supreme Court, we know, and as Benji has said, that the court did not give grounds for their decision before they made the decision. Mm -hmm. That is the ordinary way of doing things in the court, right. that you justify your decision. Now, I don't want to go into the merits or demerits of that decision. Those who are lawyers know where that merit lies. Mm -hmm. I want to say this. Politically, the truth of the matter is that even as we celebrate President Uhuru's victory, and even as the others condemn his victory, politically we are a divided country. Mm -hmm. right. And that's yeah. why I agree with Benji. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are a divided country. And then. it is because right from independence, yeah. there is this notion that once you are in the office of the president, mm -hmm. as John Gidongo says, it is our turn to eat. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's a matter of life and death when Raila doesn't go to State House. Mm -hmm for his supporters. Right. And it's a matter of life and death for President Uhuru's people when there is a slightest indication that the court might rule that it did not win legitimately. That the seat is going. Yes. So whichever way the decision goes, I can assure you, our goose is cooked in right. this country. Right. Um, 
And I want us to get into some uh, comparison uh, yes. in, your, in this particular petition and the 2013 uh, petition. And also a comparison, you know, globally, how <coughs> easy is it? And how, you know, has it even been done that uh, uh, one nullifies a presidential results in a petition, especially for an incumbent president? Uh, but... Uh, Maybe to come to you, Randall, from a legal standpoint, we're still taking a look at uh, uh, the claims by uh, Jubilee's legal team that uh, Nasser's petition is weak and unfounded and they will be flooring Raila Odinga once again. But part of Nasser's key arguments, and I'll read this word by word, uh, is they claim that IBC colluded with President Uhuru Kenyatta to deny them victory by allowing 14,000 defective returns from polling stations representing more than 7 million votes. As a result, they say the total president presidential votes cast exceeded those of other elective positions such as governors, senators, and a member of the National Assembly. Uh, in terms of, and these are some of the um, 10 key arguments that are contain, contained in this petition. Mukwana says they hold a lot of water and anybody who dismisses them then, you know, would not be a real legal practitioner. But uh, in, in, your, in your words, Tommy, does this hold any water, enough water to overturn the ruling, uh, the decision on the presidential results? That's something we won't really know until we examine the evidence that they will have to present to, to prove their argument. Mm -hmm. Secondly, a good thing about the court hearing this case is it'll give the 45% an opportunity to be had, even though they lost. Right. So that should help a little in the healing because we are a nation divided, like we have both said here. Uh, as far as it overturning the outcome, I'm, I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. I don't see sufficient uh, grounds for it to happen. But that's, bef that's a sp me speculating before actually looking at the evidence, at the evidence itself. All right. Uh, well, let's take a look at uh, the 2013 uh, you know, presidential petition. And that is on page 9 of uh, the standard this morning. And the headline here is why legal experts gave the 2013 ruling negative ratings. Yep. Uh, now, of course, there was a unanimous decision. Uh, the unanimous decision, rather, by the Supreme Court then was criticized even by the Law Society of Kenya and the top legal binds as well as international law scholars.